No better st uh, place to start with the hurling this week than in Limerick. A couple of big games there, the semi-finals, Patrick's Well against Doon and the Pierce against Kilmallock. What do you reckon, Patrick's Well and Doon? I'm sure it's tasty, isn't it, in yeah. all fairness. Um, Aaron Galan, some doubt whether he'd be back after getting a broken jaw in one of the games. I think it's about six weeks, six to eight weeks ago. That's ropey enough, like whether he'd be, whether he'd be back in time. Doon obviously have their own injury worries then as well, with, with Barry Murphy being out. Uh, if you look down through, if Galan is fit and you throw him with Keane Lynch and Dermot Burns, and I'm sure they've, they've plenty of other good fringe players as well. I believe Kieran is Kieran Carey over them this year as well. I think I think he, he's involved and in some capacity with them. And um, Doon obviously last year's county finalists as well have uh, Darrow Donovan obviously as well. Richie Richie English. It's, it's a hard enough game to call now. Yeah, Pat players. Ryan as well. Pat Ryan, of course, you know. yeah, all, all legs, all speed, yeah, like it's a, it's a tough enough game to call now, to be fair. Mm. When I've seen him in the past, Richie English has played centre-back, and do you know the way, like, he's such a competitive player, like, he's, he's very suited to getting stuck in there. He uh, kind of picked up, they played each other earlier on the year, the well won, and he kind of picked up Galan, yeah. and kept him, you know, relatively quiet. I remember Galan made an unbelievable pass for one of his teammates to score. But uh, it's a very interesting game. It's a it'd be very hard to confidently mm. call that game, especially it probably probably hinders on whether Aaron Galan is fit to play or not. If he's fit to play, that means he's he's fit to hit freeze, which would be a big addition for them. Yeah. If he's not, then the, the maybe I don't know maybe they'll bring Denver Burns up to hit freeze or to have another free taker. But it's the percentages of their scores will just come down that small bit that could tip the balance. Yeah. And, and didn't they beat Napierschik in the first round of the championship, Patrick, as well? So obviously they have quality. Yeah, if, you, if you can beat a team like Napierschik who are just stacked with county players. I was looking at a piece that Keane O'Connell did. Doon have uh, the work they put into underage. If only 58 boys in the primary school. Like a tiny pick, but it's, it's kind of hurling only anyway. It's basically kind of like lads coming into primary school here now. I don't care whether you want it or not, but you're picking up a hurl. This is funny enough with something like that. There might be lads that might have no interest in the GA, but if you just per get, persist with it and per persist with trying to get them to play, you'd get a couple of springers maybe that you wouldn't have got. You know the way people say now, oh, just let them play what they want. I don't, I don't disagree with that, but there's some lads, if you just push them a small bit, like they might just end up absolutely loving it. Sure, how many lads have been lost over the years through lack of coaching and last? Yeah, get him, if you get a lad to do it the right way and he starts to get enjoyment out of it, sure, of course he's going to persist with it. If you're doing it the right way, it's so much more fun. Like you're doing, you're there's so many less mistakes in matches. You're getting so much more confidence in matches. So if you're coached right away, you're bound to stay going. And they know that they have a certain amount of guys, and they're just trying to maximise what they have, which is very uh, admirable. Fair. Um, over in Cahir Davin, the Pierce give no shortage of hurlers, and they're expected to beat Kilmallock Well, you know what the odds are like five to one on for for the Pierce here, all Ireland finalists and all Ireland winners in the past. Kilmallock, like. They do have some quality players, but I just can't really see them. Like Michael Ryan is over the the, the, the Napierschik team had a ropey enough start against Patrick Swell. You know they were very open at the back, not not very impressive in the first round. But they've had a couple of big wins since. He's Declan Fanning in his coach with him as well, and he was obviously involved with Tip here. Could you make a case for Kilmallock? I actually could, yeah, definitely with Shane Dowling out. I could. Like they still they still have you know they still have Paddy O'Brien, they still have Gavin O'Matney, still have Graham Mulcahy as well. Of course, it's all Ireland finals five years ago. Yeah, do you know? Do you know what I mean? It's I, I, like while the have a stacked squad, and obviously they have you know Will O'Donoghue and the Casey's and a few more lads that would have been involved with Limerick. That's definitely not a foregone conclusion. If you went back through the results against Kilmanic over the past guts of a decade, there's probably it's probably a score most of the time. And Kilmanic have come out on top of a few occasions, so it's one of those cases where maybe the odds compilers haven't delved into it a bit more and it's just it's very obvious that Napierschig will win on paper but if you delve a bit deeper I don't think it's as obvious I suppose it depends on how Napierschig used the ball if they're going to go a long ball and do what Michael Ryan did with, with Tipperary a bit too much at times which I obviously talked about then that gives Kilmallock an opportunity to set up and, and know what's coming but if they like if, they, if you think of the club the guys who didn't get a run with Limerick like Kevin Downs do you know he's done it on the national stage before. David Dempsey, brilliant wing forward. He oh, wasn't really them as well. Yeah, they yeah. have. T <laughs> it's a serious squad when you put it yeah. all down on paper. Like the Dempseys or Alan Dempsey as well. Yeah. Beautiful hurler. And the thing when we played them in the club championship was the first touch of so many of their players. Absolutely class. But uh, they're a bit stung as well, having been beaten in the Munster final last year. They were heavy favourites going against mm. in against Ballygunner last year. So you'd imagine that they're on a bit of a kind of a retrieval mission. 
But it doesn't always doesn't always work out like that. That should be an interesting game. Yeah. Uh, the loud final is on this weekend. We're not going to dip too much into it because if we're honest, we don't know a whole pile about loud hurling. Uh, St. Fekins have won the last couple, I think. Though mm. they're playing against Nave Oline, so Nave um, Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, it's basically there are four teams. They're down to two. So um, yeah, just to m- I mentioned that that's on this weekend, the Cork Championship. So. Cartool and the Bears won at the weekend, uh, last weekend, in McKilly against Sarsfields here and Newtown Chandram, uh, Glen, Glen Rovers. I was reading a piece um, in, the, in the Cork Echo that outside of the Glen's two victories in 2015 and 16, you have to go back to 04 for the last time a city club won. That was the Piercig. Uh, whereas, like, you know, in the past, we'll say the 80s and, and before and maybe even after that, the Bears, Glens and Rockies were winning nearly everything, all city clubs. Um, do you fancy in McKilly here against Sarsfields? They're, they're heavily fancied by the bookies. Yeah, we was saying to you last day, I think 14 out of 15 have played senior inter-county or have played inter-county at some, one of either 21 or senior. I think it was actually senior. Mm. Like It's a really, really stacked team. It's one of these times when a divisional side, it just all comes together and they have a really, really good crop. But like before in McKilly came along, like Sars are have a fairly stacked kind of squad mm. as well. Like they're heavy, they're heavy outsiders. I don't think Emma Kelly will get it all their own way. But you imagine they would have the class. But Sars are side kind of a bit of a sleeping giant. They've just been they've been there and maybe not getting to finals the last couple of years. But they're not they're not far they're not far off at all. Newtown Shannon then they're they're not the team that had the O'Connors back in the day. Uh, Jamie Coughlin probably one of the players that people know from. Uh, you know, from the Cork team. Where's Carl Nocton still still going at club level? He's probably still pacey as they come. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> remember Tommy Walsh saying like that rather than running after Carl Nocton in a straight line, once he got run down the sideline, he used to try and run the diagonal line to just to <laughs> cut cut off the space. He's probably one of the fastest players I've ever seen at Intercounty. If he got the ball in his hand, you were you were a ghost, mm. basically. Yeah, and to be honest, um, Newtown Chandler are fancied here against. Glen Rovers, which I wouldn't have really expected, would you? But like no. Pat Horgan. Yeah, I was chatting to a fella, we were down at a wedding in, in Spanish Point earlier on this year, and this fella came in, he was rolling over from the wedding the night before, he came in around three o'clock, and uh, he nearly had a full-blown row with a fella, because someone said the hoggy wasn't the best hurler in the country, oh, no, yeah. and he was just, he, he marked him actually in training um, a good few times, and he's just saying like, he co- he just can't he can't get over what he does at club level out in Cork. You're literally talking like 113, 114 most games. They are obviously heavily reliant on him. Yeah. Um, but like when you have a player like that and in the form that he showed this year, if he puts up a big tally, the only, he only needs two or three other lads to chip in with one six or one seven, and they've a serious chance of winning the game. Like so, you definitely couldn't be writing them off. Yeah, like there, there are some teams that completely rely on one man to come back and do it all for them. And you, like other clubs, you hear this talk of, oh, he's not interested when he comes back. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like you, you've played county. Have you ever been in a situation with Borough where you're after having a long slog of a, of a season with the county and you, you're bet from it? Like you're, you're mentally drained, you're physically drained, whatever it is, and you're supposed to come back then and everyone's expecting you to lift the club team even though you're down in your boots after what you just did with the county? Yeah, it was only the, the lowly corner back. Like, and the thing is with that as well, actually, say I played corner back for Offaly for a few years, you can't expect... M- too much of yourself to come back like you can't come back and try and be a different player you can't be trying to get on the ball that wasn't necessarily my game like it was more of a stopper so if I went back with Burr and tried to be a different hurler you could really end up with egg on your face but I do see it with a lot of fellas particularly lads that are on county panels and maybe mightn't get me that mightn't be getting that much time they come back to their club a lot is expected of them and in a way they're actually worse because they've been sitting on the line nearly the whole year and probably not come back to play league matches or allowed to come back to play league matches for the club. A load is expected of them when they come back and they kind of flop and it's a load of pressure. And I'm sure you've seen that with county players, particularly lads that are on fringes as well. Mm. It can be difficult to come back because a lot is expected of you. And maybe you're rusty from not getting that much hurling. And then there's the other fella. And well, Patrick Horgan is the exact opposite of it anyway because he comes, by all accounts, like if he could hurl the Glen the whole year, he, w- he would like... But there are other fellas then that come back and maybe maybe there's a perception or it looks like they're not giving as much to the club as they would too, to the county. Too good for it or I it can be, well it can be a range of things. Yeah. Like some lads come back and they're a senior intercounty star and they've come back with a junior club and yeah. the standard is probably beneath what they're capable of. So I'd say some lads are like, Oh, I couldn't be bothered. It can be, yeah, uh, that you can you can often see that and you can see a lad kinda 
slipping back to the to that level when he sh when he should be kind of rising above yeah. as well. You know what I mean? But it's 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 a trick. It's a tricky one. There's the kind of fall between two stools. It's the lad that comes back and would even train with the club throughout the year any chance he gets. Then there's the other lad who's almost kind of dodging club training. But I do think that it's a big problem with the inter-county structure in that like, lads should be with their club, to me, every 10 days to two weeks, mm. throughout the year. I, 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 I don't think that's even negotiable. But now you have county managers basically demanding that they don't go club training, demanding mm. that they don't play and not letting them. And it's almost like they get disenfranchised with their own club and they feel like a stranger going back to their own club, which is basically, t to me, it's against everything mm. the GA and the ethos of the GA should be about. So like, I think we should be shifting back more towards the club and, and less away from the county. But, but even think about it, let's say there's, like everyone knows what the league structure is, when your fixtures are going to be in the, in the National League ne next uh, spring. Surely it should be lined up with league club games once ever that starts, so that the club, the county manager has to pick his 25 players or 20, 22 or 3 or whatever he's going to need for the weekend. And that there also be a club league game that weekend. Anyone who isn't named inside the 23, 4, 5, 6, whatever you want to say, they then are therefore released to play because otherwise, like the managers are only flogging them after them. Like an unused sub is flogged after a league 10 match. 15 minutes on a pitch or something after, yeah, which well, means nothing really. Whereas you it want to get, get hurled yeah. into, yeah. So I think it's, it's silly. It's a control thing with managers, though. A lot of them like the control of, oh, we have him here, we have him here for six months, and we're going to do whatever we can with him. To me, it's a no brainer that they go back hurling mm -hmm. club matches and show their face the club every chance to get. Loads of games in Dublin this weekend, of course, I'm going to have to let you take over here. I can't be talking too much about the ch championship I'm involved in. Um, I'll go through the fixtures if you want. Like Luke and Crave is a very interesting game. It's kind of even money each or two. Um, Crave, obviously, Crave are one of these mad clubs. They really shouldn't be where they are still, by all accounts, with the pick that they have and the location that they have. But they still manage to keep driving it on. Luke and, Luke and should... Are, Again, they're probably like a bit of a sleeping giant as well. Well, they're, they're, they're one of these teams that has been close so yeah. often over the years, and I'd say it's it's been heartbreaking some of the some of the defeats they've had at semi finals and final stage. Like they've a really good spine to the team. Of course, Peter Kelly's had so many injuries over the years, but brilliant player. Chris Crummy, probably Dublin's arguably Dublin's best player. Johnny McCaffrey's still in there. Kevin O'Reilly, is he still going forward? Uh, is it Kevin O'Reilly? Ch Chap Riley. Yeah, I'm not sure. If he he's still he was uh, he played under 21 against me years ago. He was he played up to a couple of years ago anyway. Um, Luke and or actually, yeah, it's even money each or two. I wouldn't be like I think Luke and are probably Luke and are probably a strong kind of bet in that type of game. Crave hammered Vincent's earlier on the year. Well, that's like a, a local derby where you actually have two brothers playing against right, each other. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, the two Hedertons. Right. Um, it's kind of funny. One of them went to I think he went to school with Crave lads, and the other, you know, and oh, sorry, his father's from Crave, Kieran Hedderton, who was involved with Dublin under Daly, and then the other Hedderton, uh, he probably went to school with St Vincent's lads. So you have John Hedderton on one yeah. side, and the, the other Hedderton on the other. You have that situation same down in Ke down in Kilkenny as well, where Brian Hogan and Keith Hogan were yeah, captains. Yeah. Clara um, and yeah, yeah. So Brian Hogan, when he grew up, they were living in the city, and they were living in O'Loughlin's territory. They moved out to Clara. I'd say maybe when he was like, I think, I think. They moved out maybe when Keith was like 10 or something, 10 or 11 or something like that. And Keith played with Clara the whole way through and Brian stayed playing with Lachlan and then they ended up... Um, marked each other as in the county as, final. As good as marked each other in the county final a couple of years ago, yeah. And funnily enough, Keith got called into the Kilkenny panel for one year and I think Brian was after getting dropped from the panel or retired or otherwise, or I think he actually had retired, retired, sorry. He was after retiring earlier that day. <laughs> so like the, their paths even didn't cross the county level, but it's interesting. It's some of the, those mad stuff that kind of happens at club level. And what about uh, Ballyboden against Vincent's? You'd, you'd have to fancy Ballyboden league final recently, county champions, of course. Yeah, Boden, Boden would be very disappointed with their Leinster final performance last year, but they had been brilliant up until that. To be fair, they were just mm. I don't know if they didn't show up or. Bally Hale just Bally Hale were just on a different kind of level to them that day. But up until that, like the Coolary game in the semi final was outstanding. The two county finals were were brilliant as well. Paul Ryan I think picked up a bit of a hamstring knock in uh, the league final, I think it was three weeks ago when, when Kula beat them. So like whether he's able to play or not will tell a lot, but I, I still think they would have a bit too much for Vincent's. Mm. Um, just like so many county players there are ex you know, current or, or uh, past like Conal Keeney, Shane Durkin, Simon Lambert. And as well, uh, I'm trying to think what's the name of oh yeah, Baskell. Holly Baskell. Yeah. Like he's one who came into the team last year late on. 
I'm not 100% sure if he's involved with the Dublin Senior Football Panel anymore. Someone that, you know one of these things, you obviously have to be hurling the whole time to be up to inter-county level especially, but I wonder with that pace he has, would Matty Kenny be thinking, uh, get this lad involved, and if he impresses in the county championship, and I mean it can be tough to know who's going to line out, but he's a player that's... Yeah, like, like he had nothing done hardly, like he trained like two or three times to play a practice game the week before the Coolary game last year where he got three or four goals or something like that mm. but he'd barely done any hurling up until that and then he delivers this outrageous performance what did he get was it three something ridiculous yeah, yeah. Was, I think it was three three or something like that and his pace burning burning pace like it's hard beat it's hard beat that mm. um, it'd be interesting to see if he's able to if he does play throughout the, the knockout stages and whether he's able to kind of back up a would say a, one, a kind of one-off performance. Mm. And then Nafina against Bridgets. Nafina are one of these common teams for a long, long time. Like so Shane Barrett plays for them. Um, then you've got St. Bridgets on the other side. I wonder will John O'Loughlin, the Leash footballer, be playing? He he generally does when Leash are out of contention. Um, that the pace of um, oh, I'm trying to think of his name. Oh, can Dara Dara Plunkett as well, of yeah, course. He was uh, yeah, centre back the last day, actually. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. obviously have. Uh, you have Noli in the goals as well. Uh, Nafina are kind of, as you said, they're, they're the common team. You would expect them probably just to get over get over that with Shane Barrett. Yeah, well, Nafina top the group that Kilmacud Croaks are in, yeah. and uh, so, so that'll tell you a fair bit about them. The, the betting on the, on the Kula uh, Croaks game is very strange, I have to say. I know Kula are uh, two time All Ireland club champions in, re in recent years. Kula are two to five. Crokes twelve to five. I wouldn't like. I wouldn't put much stock in how Crokes were going throughout the league or, or anything like well, that. Crokes knocked, knocked us out last year. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like in the semi final last year. So I wouldn't place much stock. Then obviously you have um, Khan is going to be back back playing this weekend. He, he, he hasn't trained with you since since April. Like you uh, seem to know an awful lot about this. <laughs> <laughs> so like I I just think it's 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 gas. Like he's going to come back in on Sunday. He probably won't miss a beat. He's just this unbelievable talent, and yeah, just look at him in Crow Park playing the the All Ireland final replay and kicking four points, and you're kind of just thinking he's one of many that the, that the Dublin hurlers are are missing out on. Like I remember Tommy Walsh saying, which is about 18 months ago, 18, 20 months ago now, he was asked who the best hurler in the country was around Christmas time, uh, 2017, and he's just thinking for a second, and I suppose it was fresh on his head. I haven't seen the club matches, and he just said the cut of Hallam was was one of the best hurlers in the country, and but it's unbelievable what he has done at club level, particularly off, you know, limited preparation. He came back in off the campaign with Dublin in 16, basically integrated back in with you. I think he came on in one of the games, and then he started every other game. Mm. Um, I suppose one of the big differences was is that he was relocated from the area of Owlert. He was wing forward, and he went in. He was full forward thereafter. He's just such a powerhouse, and even hearing him talking yesterday, he only thinks of goals. Same in Hurland. He only thinks of goals and he puts the heebie-jeebies down anyone like. Do you know what I mean? It's just, he gets the ball and you're just thinking, this lad's going to this lad's gonna skim me. And he invariably does. He's just an unbelievable talent. I just would love to see what he could offer to the hurlers if he wasn't, was involved. It would just, someone with that dynamism, you know, imagine what he could bring to the hurlers. Something that they are really, really missing as well. Obviously a very different player, but do you know the way when DJ Carey got the ball, everyone kind of went sat forward and thought what's going to happen here do you think that the crowds overnight would be affected going to Dublin matches if Con decided to jump from one to the other and I've no idea if he ever will I'd say the crowds would be affected because I think the results would be affected mm. I think I just think I just think having someone with that explosiveness someone with that oh you forgot what do people go to matches for you know big hits and big scores and he invariably delivers big scores and goals and you do get that buzz when he gets the ball you just think yeah, you're just like, you're kind of on your toes and you just think, this guy's got to do something here. And he usually does. Uh, the Clare Championship then, there's nothing on this weekend, but just a tweet from Derek Lynch, the Clare champion. He was, champ, uh, yeah, he was saying the Clare Senior Hurling Championship and Intermediate Semi-Finals are both down for decision on the weekend of the 28th and 9th. The perfect chance for a double header in Cusick Park with a great crowd. No nope, senior in the park and intermediate in Tulla and Six Mile Bridge. Is there any cop on at all? The answer is no. There's rarely cop on when it comes to um, fixtures and venues and things like that. Very, very rarely is there any cop on or common sense. It's the one thing you say, like, do these boys, sometimes just, do these boys be thinking at all? Like, and, and I, I don't know what the answer is. Which brings us nicely to the, the Kilkenny Senior Championship, which is on this weekend. Like, do you know when you're trying to get your head around these club systems? Like, Tipperary is absolutely insane, and we need to do a full podcast just to yeah. explain it. But just the Kilkenny Championship. So it's all going ahead fine this weekend. You've got the Shield final, the league final, you've got the first round, and you've got first round slash relegation. 
I mean, yeah, okay. if someone just pulled in from the moon and you, you tried to explain that to them, now it, it all does kind of make sense. There was two groups. If you top your group, you go into the league final. If you come second, both teams go into the shield final. Uh, those teams are also into the pot for the quarter final, done and dusted. Then the other couple of games are first round. So these are teams that kind of finish middle of their group. So you've got two first rounders, which in, in this case are Greg Ballycallan against Mullinavat and Dainsford against James Stevens, And then you have first round relegation. So these are teams that finished bottom of their groups. And it's, it's kind of like a last 16 game. But if you lose it, you go into relegation. Right, so it's, yeah. it's actually a good system. It's just incredibly complicated. And you can actually get on a run through having more games. Like Ballyhale mm. are in that relegation semi-final. If they win, which they should do, against uh, against Ballyragget, they, they have a chance of getting on a run. Well, it's Henry against Fifi, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they, um, they brought her in the backroom team this year, did they? Um, like just, I just just on that, like I can't imagine what the parish was like or yeah. for the mo- in the months. No, after, for the like. record, you can't you can't be doing that now. But no, I mean, no. all, all sorts of stuff has happened over the years with club teams, county teams, you name it. It does happen. And no one's can condone it. But uh, we were actually, was actually actually chatting John Milan. We were down the farm and yesterday doing a thing with the independent, and he said. Um, <laughs> They were brought up to Ballycastle two weeks before they played uh, the year to beat Tipperary in the Munster final. Remember Tony Brown got the goal mm. on the ground. I can't actually remember the year. Was it 0-2? I think, I think it was, that was 0-2, yeah. yeah. And um, they were brought up to Ballycastle uh, two weeks beforehand and they were going to play Antrim the next day. <laughs> and Justin McCarthy, they brought them for, brought them for a fry at nine in the evening. Lovely. And he told them to keep it tidy. And my mum was like, what's this lad on about keep it tidy, keep it tidy? So the boys went and on the Raz or whatever. And he said that... Uh, one of their more experienced players ended up trying to start up a JCB outside the hotel <laughs> at five in the morning, and then two weeks later they'd be tip like. But it's mad kind of the stuff that goes on. Like, just to run through the games that are on. So St Pat's against Ballyhale, that's the first round relegation. Um, you'd imagine that it's going to be a, a, like Ballyhale are going to come through that with the class of TJ Reid and all the players that people very are familiar hard, with. Very hard to pass Ballyhale. Yeah, uh, Clara against Aaron's own, that's another one. I think that's going to be a tight game. So then the, the league final is going to be Dixborough against the Lachlan Gales. They finish tops of their group. City rivals, of course, as well, yeah. yeah. Killian Buckley, by all accounts, back Hurnham very, very well for the Borough. He Just such an interrupted preparation this year. Mm. Just hope he gets a run next year because he's so important for Kilkenny. But like he was really chasing his tail all this year. Like He, he had very, very little running done and as a result, very, very little hurling done. And you could see it, unfortunately. Like, he's, a, he's a class act and he was just kind of he was under pressure even when he got the ball and he didn't feel like he was going to do the right thing this year just through a lack of hurling yeah of course Hugh Lawler and, and Paddy Deegan will be kind of man of the defence for all and Gales Shield final is the roar against Clara um, then just looking at the other quarter finals so Greg Ballycallan against sorry the last 16 first round games Greg Ballycallan against Mullinavat so Eddie Brennan and Billy Ryan be look, you know after winning the Leinster Intermediate last year if they got into a quarter final that'd be some going yeah Mullinavat are kind of a common team as well mm. they have um, the, the Malones and a lot John uh, Malone Mike Malone a, a younger kind of a team chatting any of the boys down Kilkenny it's they're seem to be a team that no one really likes playing against and very very physical so that'll be an interest that'll be an interesting game and then the last one Dainsford against James Stevens I think that's a fairly tasty one now Dainsford have won like I think three games in a row and it's probably the first time they've ever done it at senior level so Richie Hogan and Paul Murphy are the players that people would be aware of Paddy Hogan then as well of course yeah, Richie yeah. Hogan, yeah. Um, but for the, the James Stevens side Niall Brazel and Matt Root still be well Niall Brazel is young like so they'd be running the show on the front line Mikey Drennan, remember him, the lad yeah, who plays yeah, for yeah. St. Pat's playing the county final a few years ago and got two or three points. But the, the back line for, for the village is the interesting one because you're going to probably have Jackie Tyrrell, who I think has been injured. He'll probably be in the full back line somewhere. Uh, Connor Brown is centre back and Owen Larkin is actually sweeper. I, I was looking into that. So that'd be an interesting way. To, I'd say there'll they'll be, they'll be killings in this match. Yeah, there probably will be. Seamus Dwyer from Leash is over the village and he's brought down Cheddar. So Cheddar's involved with the village this year, kind of rave reviews about him. Um, it's probably no surprise maybe then that they're playing a sweeper and trying to play try, play solid at the back and try and not concede too much. I heard one about Cheddar before that uh, like a team he was managing, that he's big into this whole thing, and you've probably seen it before, of catching the slitter, showing it to all the players. It's all about them six, ounce, six <laughs> ounces. <laughs> There's a great one that Carter Healy told me about when they went over on a training camp in Spain. And uh, I think they were over there for five or six days. Not too sure whereabouts, but it was like 25 degrees plus. And he said Cheddar had the tinsel air cap on the whole week. <laughs> it's just like he's just, he's a different breed, but my, my God, he knows his hurling. 
Um, one other game then in the intermediate in Kilkenny that I wouldn't mind talking about is Fenians against John Locks. Now there was war with John Locks. I mean, I'd say plenty of people saw the video of the Flakens going on in that match and red cards and apparently all sorts of kicking off in the background and players may or may not be playing and people may or may not be involved anymore against JJ Delaney's club. So Fenians against John Locks this they're weekend. Brave men. They'd be brave men to start something similar against JJ's crowd anyway, in fairness. Yeah, the Fenians have an uh, unbelievable history, in fairness. But just on that, the the kind of shamozzles and that it definitely is um i suppose because of social media and stuff that we just see it a lot more people the the, the, the it's like the gag reflex is to take out your phone and start videoing when anything like that happens mm. so a lot of these kind of shamozzles that was more than a shamozzle now that was that, oh. that was bad like there was i, I saw one that pulled in seven times yeah, yeah, like, yeah. so it's kind of out there a lot more so you'd imagine like internally that stuff is being clamped down on because they can make out who who it is and have video evidence for it but um yeah you'd imagine people would start to be a bit smarter like and realize if you do something it's so hard to get away with anything now there's literally big brother is always watching like you know what i mean just back to, to the dance fort game as well i think the dance fort in the village like richie hogan by all accounts is in, in good shape again especially considering that he um he didn't train for the three weeks up to the all Ireland final because he had damaged his medial knee, ligament yeah. in, in his knee um He's a really, really interesting one. I think it was a smart move from him to come out after the All-Ireland final a couple of days after. and no, It wasn't break his silence, but just... just it put it to bed. Yeah, well, I, it, do you know what? It initially didn't put it to bed because it got a thousand more people talking. But in terms of, like, at least it's had a chance to die down. And before the new season, he won't really have to talk about it again because it's done. Now, he will, but it'll just be reheating the same yeah. thing. So Yeah, it's just like... You just want to nearly get yourself out there. Just put, just put it out there, and yeah, as I say, it, it didn't put the bed straight away, but at least he got it out there. Yeah. He's an interesting one in the sense that I know he said he wants to play with Kenny next year. He also said that it takes him about two hours to, to get loose before he can train to play a match. He said he can't train without the aid of a physio, which is a bit mad. Like he actually, from what I understood, he couldn't even go pucking balls without having a physio available to him. In case he had any trouble, like so, it's an it's an interesting one. Like, is his body built for intercounty level at this stage now? Will Brian Cody, uh, don't like to use the word carry, but can he? Will he? Can he afford to carry a fella maybe that can't do all the training that other lads can? Do you know? Mm. So it'd be an interesting one. But he won't want to. Geez, he definitely won't want to end his career after him been sent off in the Ireland final. Like Johnny Cooper had at least a chance to. Come back two weeks yeah. later, and know Richie wouldn't have had that even if it was Benny a draw. Benny Dunn red. His yeah, as well. like I only think about that with Benny Dunn and Redemption. He came on the next year and got a point yeah. then as well. You know, he yeah. definitely won't want you know former hurler of the year. We probably would be talking about him in TJ Reid terms if it wasn't for chronic back injuries. Yeah. Realistically, well, you'd be talking about player of the decade territory for sure. You would, yeah. Because um, yeah. same as TJ, he'd been waiting in the wings. And once he had burst onto the scene, he'd really burst onto the scene. Nearly once Henry had left, he'd kind of taken the mantle. And it's just a pity that we were probably robbed of his talent. We've seen glimpses, but we were probably robbed of the talent that we all know he possesses. Yeah, and like he put the ball in his hand and he's still going to knock it over the bar and he could do it this weekend. The Sligo final is on and I see Olin McCarthy um, tweeting, well done to Sligo GEA for fixing the Sligo senior hurling semi-finals for uh, Friday night at 8.30pm. Absolute genius. <laughs> the board couldn't organise a piss-up in oh, a brewery. Nah, it's 8.30pm. Like if do you know what we actually... Uh, there's a lot of double headers in Dublin, uh, Dublin GA, and one I think it was a Wednesday night. We were playing a quarter final, and it was going to be the semi final then on the Sunday. This is in 2015, but it was a double header, uh, and I'd say the first game probably was like quarter to seven in Parnell Park, and there's lights there so you can play the second match. Ended up going to extra time. It was nearly nine o'clock before we started our game, so it was coming up quarter past half past ten <laughs> before we finished. It's bizarre, isn't it? And you know, you try and think about covering every angle in preparation, like. You're never going to be training no. at nine. You're never going to still be training at ten o'clock some evening, you know. So it's a, it, oh, it's it's just a very very difficult situation for players. Like on a Friday night, there's probably lads travelling back. This, it, for Sligo, there's probably a lad travelling back from Dublin, mm. and he's going to be playing. It's just bizarre. Like, yeah. like I don't understand it. The Wexford Championship then is the final thing we'll look at. So in relegation, Fate Harriers against Oilgate, uh, Glen Bryan. So you, Lee Chen will be looking to save a second team yeah, this year after yeah. football. Quarterfinals then Fern St. Uh, Aidens against the champions, Navena. St. Martins, who were won it a couple of years ago, have a lot of class in there. Rory O'Connor and, and his brothers against Glen Barntown, Mark Fannings and goals there. St. Anne's with Dermot O'Keefe against Shelmaniers. Relegated uh, last week in the football, Dermot O'Keefe and, and a few of those lads. So they'll be trying to bounce back. By Shel Ford. Yeah, Shelzer. Good side, though. 
and then Rapparee Starlights against Ratnoor, who've won it, I think, 20 times over the course of their history. So that'll be that's about it for the hurling yeah, this if week. The, if the Martins, if the Martins have have a clean bill of health, they'll be unbelievably hard beaten. Mm. They're so much underage success and there's so much talent and so much speed. Mm. And if they keep Rory O'Connor and, and Jack O'Connor fit and the likes, they'd be very very hard beat. Mm. Uh, don't forget you can um, you can subscribe to the page by clicking on that button on the right there and um, click the bell if you want notifications when new videos go live.